Hey guys, my name is Solomon Matula and welcome to my analysis for some of the screenshots behind the scenes of the live adaptation of Jojo Bizarre Adventure Part 4. I've been waiting for a while for actually some of the screenshots to accumulate since there's been a lot of nice BTS photos for Jojo Bizarre Adventure Part 4 which is directed by Takahishi Mike and is produced by Toho Studios. So let's get right into it. So the first screenshot we see is actually during the scene of Angelo's stand and when they were actually in Josuke's house from what I can assume. And let me just grab my brush to work quick. And we can actually see the camera they're using is an Ari Cinema camera right here indicated by the logo is Ari. And they're obviously putting it on a rod system with along with the camera operator. We can see him there. We can see the camera operator or the first AC. And we can also see like this focus puller, this little, you know, circle that apparently has a wheel in it the second ac or the assistant camera operator will actually use this to pull focus there's a dedicated person to pull focus since sometimes some scenes will go from a close-up all the way to a wide shot and they need to change the focus immediately so that's why they have a focus wheel right here or a focus puller and you can actually see the external monitor even though these are like hundred thousand dollar cameras fifty thousand dollar cameras the screen or the LCD that you would get, you know, like in DSLRs they have little screens or flip out screens. They're an okay size, but for cinema production, they're not. And they need like an external monitor. And sometimes like an Atomo Shogun, you can actually record external 4K 10-bit 422. And 422 and 10-bit is just, you know, the color rendering and how it renders colors. But some of these cameras, like the RE cameras, and especially the red cameras they capture color very neutral so like you know literally this capture raw and so they can just do all of the color adding they can add the contrast they can add the color the color correction they can do everything in post production by the way if you've never seen red raw footage it is super neutral and when they color grade it it's very beautiful but let's just get my camera nerdiness out of the way and let's actually look at the microphones they're shooting. And this is a shotgun microphone. You've seen this in many BTS or if you've never seen a shotgun microphone, well, this is a shotgun microphone. Now, I'm not sure specifically which brand. Honestly, I think I have a strong assumption that this is probably the Sennheiser MKH416. They use it for many television shows and many films since the quality is amazing and it's like a thousand dollars and honestly it makes it expensive to us but when you really think about doing a film production where you're spending millions and millions a thousand is what like maybe a percent of a million or point one it's it's a very small number and as you can see it's very directional it's going to ignore the sides so let me just put black real quick it's going to ignore the sides and it's just going to capture straight forward and so we're just gonna this part is new the actual capturing and they make sure it's out of frame. They're probably this is what they use external monitors for again too. They use it for framing. And you can't see the shotgun microphone at all in this picture. So they're probably just doing like a tech rehearsal or an actual rehearsal or an actual take. Who knows? So they have two dedicated microphones, one for Josuke and one for Jotaro as well. So I thought they actually use one shotgun microphone for two people and just whip it back and forth depending on who's talking. But I guess both of them must be talking really quickly for the boom operator to actually, you know, be able to do that. So that's the microphone, that's the camera and the lighting as well, which you can't really see a dedicated like light itself. Well, what I can assume is they probably have one light off to the side and they're probably bouncing it to the wall to create this sort of natural house color since houses usually have tungsten or yellow lights. So they probably just blasted like a light on the wall and probably gave it had to be a very high output light in order for it to, you know, brighten the image that much. So one light right over there to the wall. So let's me actually just draw that. Boom. Here. So they're shining the light right through there and it's just bouncing around. That's bounce light right over there. And let's go to the actual shot. So we'll see this shot here. There you go. This is the shot that they were actually composing. It's basically just a medium shot. A medium shot is just, you know, a shot above the torso. So that's what it is. And because you can see the background is blurred, indicating they shot this probably like an F2, F1. Who knows? Maybe the glass here is so good they could shoot like F.98, which is bloody insane how they can get focused so good when they're shooting such a like a low f-stop so the background is super blurry the colors the bokeh or just the depth of field is really good and this one something interesting in the background like some house decoration something you would see like in an actual house 
and we can see the light in his hat his hat's well lit you can see some shadow there since his hair is actually blocking some of the light as well which gives a shot more depth i'm a fan of shadows and contrast if you watch my last video you will see how i loved to talk about shadows and such and i feel like it gives an image much more realism if you put shadows like his hat is also giving a bit of shadow right over around there i know i should pick a different color which i probably will do that actually and get a better brush because my chalk brush really isn't working let me just lower the size and boom that's all this shot has to offer a very nice and well composed shot with something fascinating and the blurry background once again makes the shot look very nice very nice so indeed all right let's go to this shot and this is of the window caught on jello and let me just talk about this first this is the shotgun microphone once again in a different position i can either assume the boom operator is on break since they're not shooting the scene or this is a position i believe i was watching a video from aperture talking about their you know boom operator like positions or like shotgun positions they could do and i believe they call this the vertical rest and i assume since you know these they can't really put the shot overhead or maybe they could since the shot right here appears to be like a close-up of angelo's face so they could probably but i think he's just taking a break so that's the shotgun right over there and we can see the cable the let me just zoom in real quick to the cable right there this is not necessarily important but it's just it's a cool thing to see because different productions will have different ways of handling cable management because cable management is very crucial in this industry trust me if you can't manage like 100 100 feet cables your production will go very slowly and just i don't know what will happen because jesus because i was in a production at college where like cables were everywhere and it was very bad very disgusting very no not disgusting but just very convoluted cable flowing right over there they probably have a way of organizing it and this is and this person right here is i can assume he's either the camera operator the first ac the first camera operator the dop the director of photography who handles all the lighting and all the cinematography and everything or just one of the gaffers or something who's just checking the lights so right here we have an re light i can assume this is of the tungsten flavor or the tungsten variant and as you can see he's shining some light right through there these metal things are called barn doors they can you can use it to like adjust how much light is coming and you can shape the light another like little monitor which i showed back in the other shot where it's used to frame shots and these and this little grid you're seeing here is probably just the actual safe grid uh, this grid will basically tell you what's going to be in frame since they're shooting in a cinematic format they have to have these grids right over here just to make sure they know what they're actually shooting so here let's uh, zoom in this and i'll show you precisely what they're shooting uh z cool and let's go there you go cool let's change it to like uh, i think blue will be a nice color to showcase and let me go find my brush tool. Cool. Oh, there you go. Ugh, I keep switching to my brush tool, but it's not working. There you go. And this is what they're shooting. This thing right over here, this is what they're shooting. And the blue one is basically saying they're not going to shoot the top. And there's Takahishi Mike himself, just probably just making sure, you know, the light is well positioned. And he's a director. He's just making sure the shot is how he wanted it to be. I can assume either this person right here is part of the actual, he's a police officer. Or maybe he's just one of the gaffers or something. And I can assume the person right behind here is the second AC who is actually originally supposed to pull focus. Maybe he's just checking something behind the light. Maybe he's, you know, behind the camera doing all the other stuff, making sure all the camera settings are good and everything else. This person is probably like, you know, a gaffer or, you know, like the DOP's assistant or anything else. He could be, he could do a variety of roles or he's actually in the trailer. I have not seen the trailer for uh, part four just yet and this person could be a detective as well because he's in a suit he's all dressed up and hair is done and everything ties well tied so it could be a person and by the way they're filming this in spain which was i was actually very surprised they're filming this in spain good fun fact to know that's a practical light which could which m could make you believe that this light source is actually what's shining this right over here or it can actually make you believe that he's actually shining a little bit light on his face when it's actually this. They use practical lights just to make the scene more interesting and actually to give and actually have an excuse for having more light in the scene. And I believe that that's another detective right over there. And I believe the binder, which could be part of the scene, it could be his binder of like cases in you know criminal and criminal acts that Angelo has done, but who knows? So 
this uh, this little array light is lighting this, which in turn is also lighting his face a little bit. And the next shot will have more detail. Let's actually go to the histogram for a second. As you can see, the shot has a lot of shadows, like around here, around there. It's very dark. A lot of very dark and contrasty scenes. Since there is a little bit of a spike right here, which is just this spot. Here, let's actually change that to a red so you don't get confused. So the spike right here is just this part right over there. And there's a little bit of light, which could be like this entire scene. Maybe the light on his shirt, his face, or it could also be this as well. And let's just go back to the other scene. See, see this shot is well lit and actually well focused and actually all around it's very lit well. You can see the shadows right over there, the blacks the right over there. You can see the highlights, the whites is his shirt right over here. You can see the midtones are in his face. The midtones is just like, you know, the middle part, which is not too bright or too dark. And yep, you can see a lot of shadow, which is right back here. And all of a sudden, the spike of light is back here. This is a quick explanation of the histogram. And this is the actual shot we're getting from here. Oh, look like a, oh my god, this looks like a convoluted mess. My bad for that. And as you can see, there's a lot of shadow. There's not even a semblance of highlight or midtones. As you can see, shadow, 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 shadow everywhere. And you can see his red in his face right over there, which is actually shot from this RV light, but it makes us believe. But if I didn't tell you that this was a practical light and we didn't see this, I would have believed honestly that was just this light. So you can see the red in his face right over here is lit and he's looking away. There's another light towards the side of his face as well, which could be the outside natural light. They also use natural light to actually help them, you know, add fill. Natural light or outside light, usually if it's diffused through a window or through a silk or through some other external material, can be used to harness natural light to make it actually nice and presentable in this case. And yep, that's that's a shot right over there. Very simple and very clean. Now let's look at Takahishi Mike actually directing. He's the director, if I didn't mention that before, along with Josuke and Koichi. They're actually in Okeyasu's house doing the scene with his brother and everything else. And as you can see, they're actually inside the set. And actually, I believe they're actually shooting like a light through this. So it's shooting like maybe, maybe they're using a 1K to 3K light and just diffusing it to make it sort of out of exposed, but it's very blurred in the background. Who knows what the shot could truly look like, but we can see it's a very haunted feeling, spider webs all around, spider webs, all of the actual wood panel could show you that they broke through it. It looks very man broken through or could be very natural causes. But those two actors are just looking at, I believe, the script for the day. Maybe they're looking for the script for the scene. Or maybe Takahishi Mike has a certain vision he wants for the scene and he wants them to look through the script. Or he could just be going through the entire like day. Who knows? Some some directors uh, showed them maybe the synopsis or something. But that's just him going to work. Let's look at this last screenshot. No. Actually, that's everything. Oh, I thought there was one more, but I guess that's everything, folks. So let me know what you guys, give me a second. Let me know what you guys think of this video in the comment section below. I'll be sure to watch this trailer. I will actually link all of the BTS photos in the description down below along with that trailer. Be sure to follow me over on my Twitter and Instagram, and I will see you later.